located in the Indian Ocean, just 400 kilometers off the eastern coast of Africa. Madagascar is the world's fourth largest island. In many aspects, it's an utterly unique place. Many of its indigenous animals and plants can only be found here and nowhere else on the planet. Incredibly, it's home to 112 different types of lemurs. What's even more incredible is that they are all endangered or critically endangered. Oh my God, amazing. Eileen and Photos Park director, Sean, have traveled to Antanarivo, the capital of Madagascar. From there, they will travel to the rainforest to see whether lemurs actually have a chance of survival in the wild. Very different from home. I didn't realize Antanarivo was so big. The houses, all different shapes and sizes built into the side of the hill. It took about an hour, an hour and a half just to get out of the city and then into the countryside. With species as endangered as lemurs, these fact-finding missions are crucial for people like Eileen, who work with them day in, day out. Studying their behaviour and seeing where and how they live will give Eileen better knowledge and more tools to care for the pair they have in Fota. <laughs> Professor Jonah Ratsambasafi, who's been studying lemurs for over 20 years, and as one of the world's leading experts, will be Eileen's guide on this trip. He believes the only chance lemurs have of surviving in the wild is if the local people want them to survive. You can turn poachers into gamekeeper. Many of those guides, they used to be poachers, but they're no longer poachers. They're among the best guides in the world now. Barely into the rainforest, Eileen hears the calls of the Indri, one of the rarest lemur species that can only be found in the wild. When we entered the forest, all you heard was our calls, and it was like, when are we going to see them? When are we going to see them? Now we have to walk off trail because that's where they are. Yeah. Yes. Just can you see? Yes, I can. Yeah. <gasps> Small bit excited about the injury. You, you can't see them in Europe. You can't see them in captivity. They're only there. And I did not realize how chill they were about us being anywhere near them. They were just sitting in the tree. Largest species of lemur. It's amazing to see them. I never thought I'd see them, ever. They are absolutely stunning. They're very, very unlike a lot of lemurs. They have huge back legs. It's just fascinating. But um, they are in serious trouble. If anything happens to the forest, whether it's man-made, whether it's poaching, logging, taking everything away, or a huge fire, because in the dry season, it's all tinder, it just goes up in seconds. Um, that's their habitat gone. They will no longer exist. And we don't have the animals to put back there. Eileen has traveled 6,000 kilometers to Madagascar on a mission to find out more about critically endangered lemurs, the animals she cares for back in Fota. She is hoping to see them in their natural habitat. As she treks deeper into the rainforest, her guide, Professor Ratsambasafi, spots her favorite, the black and white rough lemur. and up high. Yeah, it's all right up the top. So how many lemurs up here? 
This family group, there are four. The males and the females look the same. Yeah. They can live up to 10, but that's a really big group. Yeah. When there are many foods, but here, four. From time to time, I come to the forest to check every time when they give baby to ensure if the baby survived or not. So we do what we call monitoring, but right now we have the guides, the local guides, yeah. to study, to follow them, to watch them so they can take notes, so we can have records yeah. of the, where, do they do, uh, where do they go, how many individuals in the group every year. Yeah. Based on this data, we could improve our management of the forest. Deforestation is one of the major threats of the black and white trap tumors. And in some area in Madagascar, they no longer exist. The decline of the Madagascan rainforest and other rainforests around the world is mainly caused by people cutting and burning plants and trees to create more fields for farming. It's called slash and burn, and the impact on the environment is nearly always damaging. The fields created through slash and burn are intensely farmed over a relatively short period of time, and once all the nutrients are gone, they are gone for generations. You could understand why people need to kind of survive here, that they, they have a completely different style of life. It's very easy to judge from home, kind of going, why? Why would you, why would you burn stuff? But it's, they need to feed their families and that is what they're doing. It used to work when there are few, not many people. And now we cannot use slash and burn. I went to the forest not far from here a few years ago. And we could hear the black and red rough tumors, loud call. And two years ago, I went to that forest and no call because they are all depleted. They are no longer in the forest. Within the next 30 years, if the current speed of deforestation in Madagascar remains the same, there is no forest left in this country. Nothing. Which means that there is no black and white draft teams left in Madagascar. The hope is that the next generation of farmers can be persuaded to use farming methods that don't require burning down what's left of the Madagascan rainforest. The community here in Marmisa work with us to do reforestation, to repair the damage of their ancestor, and that's what you're doing. Oh, there's another one up here, yeah? We are not condemned to repeat the same mistakes of our grandparents. So we want the black and white draft tumors to be in our forest. Our job at FOTA is to maintain genetics and to really learn as much as we can and keep all the natural behaviors that we can. So it's great to see that they'll do the same because as we've learned just walking through the forest from uh, Jonah was that in 30 years this could be gone with that's how fast everything's moving and 30 years is a blink of an eye and it's our responsibility to do something and the great thing at Vota we have a pair that hopefully will breed and that means we'll maintain genetics as a fallback population that if we need more numbers we need to reintroduce that's fantastic that we have that. It's a proper experience being close to them, hearing them. You can't replace it with just, oh, there's a picture. We once had those, but they're gone now. We really would be messing things up if we let this go.